Treating animals is only half my job. It takes half my time, half my energy, and half my attention, which may actually sound nothing short of dangerous for your pet. But this actually makes me a very good vet because the other half of my attention is on you, the human being in the middle, the pet guardian. You are the person who lives with, loves, and knows the story of your wonderful animal companion. Unfortunately, most people have poor experiences with vets, which can lead to poor outcomes, bad outcomes, which is really sad. If you're struggling to get your vet to listen, and you know you're not getting the results that your pet needs and deserves, it is not your fault. And I'm here to tell you that you are not alone. I think we need to repeat that. It is not your fault. I've been a successful vet for more than 15 years, and I can tell you that there is a better way for both your pet and you. Anna is a pet guardian of Tinker, a fit and well Springer Spaniel on a raw food diet. But her vet didn't know. She was worried every time she saw her vet that they would find out. She knew that it was best for her pet and she hated lying, but she felt also afraid. She thought her vet would blame the diet for her dog's illnesses. She knew that he was better on the diet, but she was so afraid that she used to make up the name of a dry dog food when she went to the vets. The problem was she couldn't remember the name of the food and always came up with a new name at reception. She gained a reputation or as someone who constantly changed her dog's diet. And of course, the vet thought that may be a contributing factor to poor Tinker's illness. Mark took his cat Milo to the vet because he was constantly licking nasty bald scabs and causing patches and scabs on the skin. He was in a very sorry state, but his vets would not listen. Every time he went, a new vet told him it was a flea allergy. His vet didn't believe that Mark was treating the fleas enough and used to say, well, it just takes one flea. They didn't listen when Mark pointed out that he ran a cat tree and had some experiences. It took 18 months to get the right diagnosis and food allergy was diagnosed in the end, the culprit. And My Milo suffered horribly. Milo's guardians did too. Every time his wife looked at poor Milo, she was almost in tears. She knew it was cruel if only their vets had listened. Do you mourn about your vet? About the pricing? About how they do not listen? Do you get frustrated with the communication or lack of? Do you feel rushed, ignored, patronized, and disappointed. You might feel like your vet misunderstood you and you were certainly not in control of the situation. Did you sometimes feel helpless and without a choice? Perhaps you felt stupid, not intentionally, and confused. Perhaps your expectations were not met by reality. Sometimes unexplained rage or fear may occur without knowing why. It is so sad to see you suffer when in reality you only want the best for your pet. It doesn't have to be like this. Imagine all your concerns, expectations and feelings being heard, accepted and appreciated. What if your vet asks how you have been affected by your pet's illness? Imagine having no prejudice or fear when you're helping your pet to recover. You're not just a pet guardian who only sees a vet when your pet is unwell. You're a unique individual filled with dreams, expectations, and fears, just like anyone else. You're certainly not someone that needs to be told what to do with your pet. You should be the one in charge and feel in control at all times when it comes to your beloved pet. What if your vet appreciates and values your help when diagnosing and treating your pet? Imagine getting excited to see your vet knowing that together you will find the most appropriate treatment for your pet because not only does she knows how to make your pet better, which is essential, she also knows how to make you feel better, which is crucial to allow both your pet and you to win. Caring for your pet in this way can even be good for your mental health. What would that mean to you? I am going to show you precisely how to do this. I'm going to pull back the curtains that shroud veterinary medicine and help you understand how your vet thinks. I will also show you step by step how to achieve the best relationship you can with your vet. You will be armed with knowledge that allows 
you to be your pet's hero and play an active role in helping your pet get better. From illnesses, you'll also be shown trade secrets like your vet's biggest fears to allow you to understand, empathize, and build a meaningful relationship with her. You'll be empowered with simple facts and truths that will improve your confidence and faith that you are your pet's CEO and you stay in charge always. I'll walk you through a step by step until you have mastered everything necessary to get your results. Before I became a vet, I was already a pet guardian, like you. I remember taking my seven year old female black and tan miniature pincher, Mew Mew, to the vets because she was unwell. I was incredibly stressed and just felt guilty for not being able to keep her healthy. When I brought her to my vet, I felt she did not listen to me and just wanted to give multiple injections and oral medications to my dog. Following that, further testing had to be performed as Mimu was not getting better. I saw a different vet and received slightly different advice. I did not feel supported as I felt the communication was not enough to allow my understanding. Eventually, Mimu got better and I changed vets after that. I knew there had to be a better way. Going to vets simply cannot be this hard. When I graduated from the Royal Vet College in London, I realised that while I was armed with more knowledge about animals than I had ever expected, I did not learn much about you, the wonderful pet guardian. The entire degree focused mainly on how to find out what is wrong and how to treat your pet. I started my practice, Amity Vets, whose core purpose is to empower you through education, as I believe veterinary medicine should extend further than merely treating, than merely treating animals. It should also include and embrace the unique beauty of the bond between your pet and you. I've had the privilege and honour to work with over 10,000 pet guardians, perform over 60,000 consultations and had more than 90,000 pet guardian interactions. I've had good days and bad days. I've performed consultations that I wish I'd done better and others that have changed lives. I speak humbly when I say I have learned more from pet guardians like yourself than I have taught them. Focusing on pet guardians as much as their pets has brought astounding results to all. They were happier. I felt my job was more meaningful and their pets benefited the most. I started helping other pet guardians who were seeing other vets and they achieved the same results. I found out that this can be accomplished for any pet guardian, including you. Many of them have urged me to share this knowledge and insight. I felt compelled to write, to discuss this, to share this, to do just that. I believe that there's so much more goodwill than your vet can bring to you that extends further than merely treating your pets. If you have a great relationship with your vet, this will help you to enhance it. If you have not and wish to, this will also give you a solid foundation to build upon. This presentation, however, does not guarantee that your vet will work with you. Just like all pet guardians are different and unique, not all vets are the same. Just like how you choose who to make friends with, you should be choosing a vet that suits you. Sometimes it is just a bad fit. This will provide you with the best insight to recognize a fit or not and develop a mutual understanding and respect with your vet. Just to note, considering that there are more female vets than male vets at present, to avoid any confusion and to keep it simple, I referred vets as female and pets as male. So to start, let's take a look at the very basis of veterinary medicine. What and who is it for? Does it impact your pet or you more? Stay tuned. Remember, until you have loved an animal, a part of your soul remains unawakened.